Haiku Season 2 Episode 6. Hanada a little banged up. Oh, is Coach and Hinata solo trip? That's intriguing. Damn. <laughs> to a, a kid. They're both going through stuff. The two of them. Maybe time for a soul searching episode. My man is on edge. Is that? Damn, there he is, the legend himself, who I now love after previously hating. Oh wow, it's Grandpa Ukai. The original, the original great Ukai. I already love this setup, the fact that Coach is following this lead. He could have just told Hinata to shut up, you know, get in line, you're bringing down the team. But when I watched the last couple episodes, I felt intrigued by what Hinata can do. And I want to say that explored to its extent. I can't even fully put my finger on it, but I feel like you only get so many of these moments that Hinata's having right now. Ultimately, it will be up to him whether or not he can pull it off. Because he has that desire and because it's potentially disruptive, it's his responsibility to shoulder the bulk of that. You know, it's like stepping up to the plate voluntarily. But it would be such a missed opportunity, I feel, to not explore this and not give him at least a shot to prove himself. And I feel like it would make Hinata resentful, ultimately. To have Coach see something in him, believe in him, if only to this extent, I think is, it speaks really well of him. Episode 6, Tempo. <laughs> wow, looks like Coach Ukai is blasting off again. Unless they're my relatives. Yeah, just immediately I can feel that someone like Grandpa Okai is going to respect this and be drawn to it. Someone like that is waiting for someone like Hinata. In a way, I felt like he was giving Hinata permission. Being hassled by, oh, by my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love they said that out loud. That's so perfect for this crew. They just do volleyball non-stop 24-7. Do you know how much this means, Oikawa, that Kagama is pleading with you for help? That's desperation and humility. This, I mean, actually could be a really sweet, beautiful friendship. There's so much history. Yay! <laughs> After a lot of rubbing it in, though. <laughs> Built into this whole thing, this whole drama, is a lot of mutual respect. It's an embarrassingly thin line between fear and jealousy and anger and respect. Though neither of them would be willing to admit that. And all that backstory between them, all their rivalry and history would make it extra sweet if they found a mutually beneficial relationship. That seems like just such a huge, low-hanging fruit for their growth arcs. <laughs> Oh, wow, way to put him on blast, nephew. Damn, Oikawa got dumped? Did she see him play volleyball? Does she not value volleyball as much as I do? <laughs> After watching one season of this show, doesn't she understand what she had? She is just somehow not living in the world of IQ. She must not have heard the, the fan cheers. I was about to say the same thing, but that, that's kind of a vulnerable thing to go into. I mean, they tried it for about five minutes. <laughs> oh, that's what Ukai said. It's all right. It's all right. Three steps forward, one step backwards. It's a normal, healthy trajectory. I mean, he still gave him solid advice. Whoops. Ooh, Ukai's kids against Hinata. I'm expecting them to just crush. 
Todo tempo. Tempo. Oh, and in the face again. Got it. We're good at that one. This is obviously about volleyball, but at the same time, it's also very much about Hinata personally, literally and figuratively opening his eyes and waking up. And I feel like it might be easy to miss how significant it is just because the gap from where he is right now as a great player to being a leader, stepping into that space is really, really difficult. I think he can do it. I think he's prepared for it. But I think even he doesn't realize what he's asking for and how difficult it is. This seems to symbolize not only his growth as a player, but like a new elevated consciousness and awareness of what he wants and what he's doing. It's a very dramatic reaction to what he just said. Where's he going? To grab Kagayama? Wow, that's awesome. On a mission to grab Kagama. Kagama is a big man, so he's fine. If you don't understand that, you're going to go back to I mean, I think it's going to be both of them now. They're a pair. Oh, there he is. So that was that insight he was having. A ball that's easy to hit. I have no worries for Hinata and Kagama just because they both have the same goal. This will unite them. Kagama already does that. He sleeps with it. まあ、俺も理論として頭に入ってるだけで、全然応用できてなかった。お前のそこを特別と身構えすぎて、根本的なことを忘れるとこだった。ディスタンスビトゥイン as Hinata said, he's up for it. Give this man a task, he'll figure it out. This is the best thing for him right now, I think. I expect, expected nothing less from Kageyama. Oh, so it was him that gave him the bandages. Good policy. Yeah, she got set up real bad. She just joined the team too. Hinata was a good person. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. That doesn't feel like a punishment though or demotion. Hinata. Oh, she's been <laughs> carrying this with her. She deserves an apology, not just Tanaka. It was pretty heartbreaking watching Hinata cycle off in tears in front of her after that argument. She just got the full, full brunt of that force. Wow, she just came running. <laughs> yep. Justin the hair. I wonder if she uh, has any feelings for Daichi. Who could blame her? Nice, I like how a lot of them are working on their own individual things. If you can get it past Noshinoya, you're doing something right. It's good practice for both of them. Nishinoya got Tosu. Moshkaste. Sejo no libero no areo. Interesting. Not a little spark, it seems. Not that they don't have that personality already, all of them, but he definitely shook things up. 
Ooh, that's pretty cool. I like how his piss he was off by like an inch. But yeah, I guess you need to get perfectly precise. <laughs> You're whatever I say you are, shrimpy. <laughs> Just doubling down on it. I love it. That felt good. That felt really good. And then going back to practice with Kageyama as he masters this gravity-defying skill is gonna be so great. That seems to be the point of it. That's just what? I don't know why this caught my eye, but that was incredibly graphic. The sign on his shop. Oh my god. <laughs> I never noticed that before. Doing it backwards, no less. Don't look at your report card. Don't look at it. It doesn't matter. For now, it's not over here. That's not why we go to school. School is for volleyball only. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's like weight training or training with weighted pads or something like that. Right, and then when he gets an actually great setter, he's gonna dominate. <laughs> and now farming. <laughs> Oh, another exhibition? Cool. You can do it once. As if we weren't already doing that. Oh yeah, school was interrupting. Wow. Wow, it's all happening so fast. That episode felt huge. The previous episode sort of hit a low point that I think was the lowest since the start of the show. But it's like Takeda-sensei said at the end of the tournament arc. The challenge isn't how to deal with those moments. And I feel like it's a really healthy trajectory for growth. I think it's just inevitable. Because they're just growing so fast, right? And you hit a wall eventually. And I think what is often the case is part of that wall is things that you've learned incorrectly. I mean, it's natural, right? When you start a huge pursuit, it's all unknown. And you're just trying to get as many pillars of support as you can to get a baseline so you can start to improve. But it's a little bit too much to take on at once. And so you're going to end up leaning on pillars that are there just because they're good enough, right? But they're not as good as they could be. Speaking just bigger picture, that's an analogy for, for life as well. You know, you're born into the world as a child knowing nothing. You basically grab on, grab on to structures that you feel best facilitate your survival and your growing up and thriving. And a lot of that is unconscious and based on your environment. And I think part of growing up and maturing is re-examining the pillars that were built imperfectly. You know, you can be grateful to them for getting you to where you are today and keeping you alive and helping you achieve whatever successes you've achieved but then kind of allowing them to retire and replacing them with better things, you know, better patterns of thought, habits that are more conducive to the life you want to live, etc. And it's not an easy process. It's really, really hard to deconstruct things you've relied on for a long time and go back to the beginning in a sense and rebuild because it makes you vulnerable and you've come to need those things or you think you need those things to survive or play volleyball in this case. And you know that at least for a little while you'll be exposed and it's dangerous. It's kind of like a hermit crab leaving its shell for a better shell, you know, in those moments in between, they can be picked off. If they were to face their opponents in the spring tournament right now, they'd be doomed. But of course, by doing so, it allows them to enter a space where there's a higher possible ceiling. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So we went from this low and feeling kind of in conflict and fighting each other to being in a much more optimistic building stage where they've they've taken the leap, it feels to me. And not just Hinata and not just Kageyama, but a lot of them are doing their part. So the only questions remaining are, is it enough? And do they have enough time? before the, the games begin. Mm -hmm.